and welcome to Monday Motivation. This is Lady Tammy. I know you guys are used to seeing Pastor Daryl here at this time, but this time it's me. You got me this time. So I am thankful to be here, thankful for this time and this space. I hope that this week will lead you into one of the greatest weeks you've ever had during this time. In this time, we are seeking a whole lot of um, peace in this time. Last week we talked about peace, five scriptures for peace. This week we're gonna continue talking about peace. So join me in the word, get your Bibles, get your pen, get your paper so that you can jot down notes if you need to. Don't be ashamed if you have to use the index in the front of your Bible to find the books of the Bible if you don't know them and where they are. So thank you again for joining us. So let's go to the word of God. So we're talking about peace. Peace is something that you need. Peace helps you keep your life in order. Peace helps you keep you organized. So let's talk about it. Psalms 34 and 14 says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So I seek peace. I seek and pursue it. Not just for me. I'm asking for people that I'm connected to, people that um, I talk to often, that they would do the same thing. Seek peace and go after it. So pursue means to chase it, is to run, is to be anxious to get it, is to be, I need it more than necessary food and water. Seek peace and pursue it. So that seeking peace, seek peace. Simple as that. Go find it. And how, how do we find it as saints? We find it through the word of God. We find it through our prayer life. We find it through fasting. That's how we seek peace. So let's seek peace and run after it. The next one is we want to have peace in our hearts. We don't want to have um, turmoil and always trying to feel comforted and always feeling you know stressed and always feeling like anxious and those kind of things we want to have peace in our hearts so let's go to John 16 and 13 we should have peace with our relationship with God we should not be in constant questioning we should not be in constant turmoil about our relationship with God either you're in it or you're not so we should have peace in our relationship with God so let's go to John John is in the New Testament it is part of the four Gospels the first four Gospels so it's Matthew Mark Luke and then John and then we're going to the 16th chapter and the 33rd verse and I'll meet you there when you get there it says and if he and if he sins oh I'm sorry I'm reading the wrong one. Sorry. Reading the wrong verse. I got mixed up that time. Let's see. John 6 and and we're at John 6 16 and we're at John 16 and 33 it says these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world I you will have mm. John 16 and 33 these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so who do we have peace in the Lord Jesus that's the only way you're gonna have peace you're not gonna have peace through eating you're not gonna have peace through your mama your daddy now they bring a, a sense of peace and comfort but not the internal peace that we need how we're going to do that is that we seek after God the first scripture in Psalms 34 14 it says seek peace pursue it this this is saying the only way you're gonna have it is through him through God 
This is Jesus speaking to the disciples, teaching them as he before he leaves and goes to his um, his destination of the cross and then going on to heaven. He's saying, seek me first and I will give you peace. So we are to seek him and pursue it and find it and have a relationship with him and be willing to allow God to work in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our spirits. And how do we do that? Our resources. Our resources are the word, prayer, and fasting. I am a big believer in all three of those. This is the only way that you will find peace in your life is through those three resources. And faith envelops all of those. You have to have faith in all of that you're doing. In when you're reading the word, when you're praying, when you're fasting, the faith to believe that God is hearing you and that he feels your your pain, he feels your uh, frustration, he feels everything that you're going through. Seek him for peace. So the next scripture that we'll be talking about is Matthew 10, 13. This is peace in your atmosphere. Peace in where you go. Peace in who you are in relationship with or peace on your job. Peace in your atmosphere. So Matthew 10, 13, which is still in the New Testament, just the um, two books over. So Matthew 10, 13, and I'll meet you there in the New Testament. If the household, oh, let me explain a little bit about this. Um, this is Jesus talking to the disciples before he sends them out two by two to give them instructions on how to minister and where to go. They didn't have a place to go back to. They didn't have anywhere to live. They didn't have um a place to go and rest once they um, minister. They had to go to the houses of the people that they ministered to and hope and was hopeful that the people received the word so that they could receive them too. So 10 and 13, it says, if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. So when you are in a certain atmosphere, that means your home, your job, your car, the grocery store, you are to bring peace. In the old times, in, in during this time, if you came to someone's home, you were to come to bless it and bring peace and bring your anointing with it. And you would bless the household. So in our times, we may not come out and say, I'm coming to bless your household, but we should, before we go into a lot of atmospheres, pray on the porch, pray before you go in the building. Lord, let them, let peace follow me as I go in this building. Let everyone in this building feel my peace. Let everyone feel who I am and who I serve when we go into our atmospheres. So. When you are in an atmosphere, you should bring the peace and blessings with you. If you are received well, that means if someone knows your reputation, if they um, know who you are and know who you serve, leave your blessings there and you're, you're adding to their house. You're not taking away, you're adding blessings to the house. Just you by, by you're adding just by you being there. Isn't that amazing? If you are living this word of God, if you are using the resources, your life will bring peace in the midst of chaos, in the midst of someone feeling like, I don't know what to do next. Just your words, your actions will bring peace into that atmosphere. Now, we are not to go into an atmosphere and bring frustration, to bring um, strife and jealousy and um, arguments and confrontations. We are not to go into an atmosphere bringing that with us. If you are bringing that with you, then I suggest you not go into that atmosphere because people already know who you supposed to be serving. And I'm using air quotes because if you bring all those things in, then you're supposed to be serving the Lord Jesus. And if they don't feel the peace that you have, don't go in that atmosphere. 
don't bring, don't add negativity to the atmosphere. Bring blessings and peace to that atmosphere. Don't be that person that when people see you coming, they're like, oh, all right, let me brace myself because I don't know what she'll say. I don't know what she, he'll do. I don't know what he feels like today. Be that person that when people see you, they're glad to see you, that they feel the peace in your life. So be peaceful, bring peace to your atmosphere. The next verse, boy, we really need to practice this as being saved, blood washed, sanctified, Christians, whichever title you want to use. We need to have this peace in our actions, peace in our conversations. So let's go to James, James 3. James 3 basically talks about the tongue. And the tongue can bring strife, it can bring anger, frustration, or it can bring peace to the atmosphere. So we just talked about atmosphere, now we're talking about peace in your actions peace in your conversations so James 3 is right after Hebrews it is in the um, New Testament so I will um, let you get there and then we'll read it and I'll meet you there so bring peace seek peace have peace in your heart have peace in your atmosphere bring those all they're all supposed to be enveloped into your salvation that you have and what I mean by enveloped means it comes in a bundle. The bundle of, you know, um, those that you have children, you know what a bundle is. A game system comes in a bundle sometimes. So that means you have the, the console, you have the controllers, and you have the game. So we are to have this in our bundle. Salvation all these things that I'm speaking about are to be bundled in our salvation. So it shouldn't be anything um, outside of this salvation that will cause strife, that will cause um, arguments and confrontations and frustration and anxiety and situations. It should be in our salvation already. So if you're if you're saved, you you said Romans ten and nine says confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that He has risen from the dead. And those are the people that are saved. Those are the people that we say when we say we're blood washed. Those are the people that say we are Christians. We those are the people that says we are sanctified. We should already have peace. If you don't have the peace that you need, you need to be getting into your resources your resource this is one of them the next one is prayer the next one is fasting if you don't know how to find it in this resource then I suggest that you find someone that does and that you know is a proven uh, has their life has proven to you that God lives and that he has changed them 360, 380, 410. If you know that for sure, then get with that person or those people or those group of people that can show you through this resource that you can have peace. So let's, let's are you there yet? I hope you're there. So I'm talking about James 3, right after Hebrews. If you just joined us, thank you for just joining us. We are talking about five scriptures of about peace. We talked about peace last week. We're talking about peace now, again, because we need peace in this season that we're in. Everybody's going through the same season, the season of viral virus, the season of political, the season of um, racial tension. Everybody's going through this same season. So we're not different because we're saints of God. We're not different because we feel the tension. We feel the same action. We see the same actions. Everybody's going through this. So right now we need peace in our lives. We need peace in our hearts and minds, in our atmospheres, in our actions. So we're seeking it. We're, we're seeking and pursuing it. So what I said before, seek it means you need to be looking. Pursue means that you need to be chasing. You need it more than your necessary bread. We're seeking it. We're using peace in our hearts to give to others. 
We're using peace in our atmospheres, and now we're using peace in our actions. So James 3, 3 and 17, it says, But the wisdom that is from above, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits. So, where does our wisdom come from? Above. Our resource. Prayer. Fasting. Where does wisdom come from again? Above. Our resource. Our fasting. And our praying. That's where it comes from. It comes from God. Through our resources. So we are to be pure. We are to be peaceable. We are to be gentle, willing to yield, and full of mercy and good fruits. Wow. These things should be bundled with our salvation. Peace is part of our salvation. Peace is not something outside. It's not something you need to add to. It is bundled in our salvation. So when we are in conversations with our actions, we are to have all of these characteristics. It is part of our bundle. If you are missing any of these things out of our bundle, what do we do? We seek from above. We use our resources, prayer, fasting, and reading the word. That's how we get peace. So the next verse This is our fifth verse, fifth and final verse. Same chapter, same book, same chapter, James 3 and 18. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Talked about the bundle. Fruit is evidence. You can't have an apple tree showing with pears on it. It is an apple tree. It does not bear pears. It bears apples. Our righteousness should bear peace. Our salvation, our blood washed lives, our Christianity, our salvation, our confession, confession, our actions, our conversations should bear fruits of fruits as well as bear the fruits of peace. So bring peace into your atmosphere. Bring peace into your life. Bring it how we talked about it. You seek it and pursue it. You find it. You chase after it. You're always looking to see where you can help somebody have peace. We're showing peace to someone else. We're showing mercy to someone else. We're showing good to someone else. So seek peace. Pursue it through our resources, which is from above, as well as through the word, fasting, and praying. I hope that these 10 scriptures that we've done for the last two weeks will bring peace into your life. If you already have peace, let it add to your peace that you already have. You want to have the peace that pass understanding. You want to have the peace that knows like all of this is going on and you're just as calm. In all of this that's going on, our peace should pass all understanding. It should pass our friends understanding. It should pass. It should even blow us away how peace can come into our lives with everything that's going on. So we are to be seeking and pursuing. We are to be showing it in our atmosphere. We are to be showing it as it flows from our, showing it in our actions. We are to be showing it um, to our fellow man. We are to be showing it to our relatives. Peace, peace in our minds, our bodies, our hearts. Yes, peace can be accomplished when you're using your resources. God, the word, prayer, and fasting. Let's seek after peace. Let's pursue it. Now you have 10 scriptures that talk about peace. 10 scriptures that can help you along the way in finding the peace in God. So I ask you that as you are looking at and hearing Monday Motivation and reading through the scriptures, that you would let us know how these 10 scriptures have helped you find the peace that you've been looking for. 
and you can give it to someone else. We are not to keep this word to ourselves. We are to give it to someone else. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us again today. Whether it's the evening time, the morning time, or the afternoon for you, we thank you for watching Monday Motivation. Join us every week at 3 p.m. for Monday Motivation. You'll be seeing me again, and I thank um, Pastor Darrell for giving me this opportunity to do Monday Motivation. If you would like to give to the ministry, you can do so at Cash App, dollar sign, winning prayer. And if you want to write us, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at winningandprayer at gmail.com. And you can guarantee that we'll read it and we will respond. Again, thank you for joining us for Monday Motivation. And in the meantime, guess what? Keep winning in prayer. Hi guys, this is Pastor Johnson, and I want you to join me as I pray for families. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to pray for families everywhere, God. Father, we're praying for grandmothers, great-grandmothers, for uncles, aunts, nephews, God, cousins, nieces, God. We're praying, God, that you would bring them back together, God. We're praying for that family that may be on the outs with one another, with one another, God. We're praying for that family that has been strained due to drug addiction. We're praying for that family that has been strained because someone lied, God. God, we pray that you would bring them back together in unity, God. Heal old hurts, God. Heal old wounds, God. Heal of old things that were said and done, God. Uh, for, 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 for betrayals, God. We pray, God that you will help families move beyond these things and get back to being family, God. A family that loves God, a family that cares, God. A family that covers, oh God. We pray, God, for victory in families everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, oh God, for unity. God, we thank you for strength, oh God. We thank you for love that that abounds, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that those that haven't talked in years, God, will will begin to love one another again, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the renewal of families, God. We thank you for the restoration of families everywhere. And God, we give you praise and honor and glory right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for families everywhere. Amen. an employment issue. Father God, we do thank you for those that may be facing an employment issue. Father, your word declares that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. And you turn it, turn it there with us ever you will. So God, we just thank you for those who are in power. We thank you for favor with those that are in power, that they will look favorably upon us, God. And so we just thank you for victory in all circumstances all situation. God, we thank you for reports of of not not only one job offer, God, but we thank you in advance for multiple job offers, God, with good pay and good benefits, God. And so, God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise right now. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen.
Well, hello and welcome to Winning in Prayer TV. My name is Lady Tammy Johnson. I am a co-founder of WIP TV. We would like for you to join us as a partner to be seen in 50 million homes on our Roku channel. If you would like information on becoming a partner and your ministry to be seen, please email us at Winning in Prayer tv at gmail.com again winning in prayer tv at gmail.com may you have a blessed and prosperous new year see you soon